Oh, yo. Black power, black. <laughs> is it still on? Of course it is. Okay, but the camera done swip swap. Maybe it didn't. <clears throat> black power, black power. I have some stuff on my mind. I'm gonna put my headphones back in if that's all right with y'all. Um, first of all, look at this BS. Can y'all see it clear? Oh, you can't? Okay. Can you see it? You still can't? Okay. It's the light and the glare. It say welcome to East Brooklyn. So people like me, you know, I ain't been here that long. I was born in 1990, but I got a problem with some damn East Brooklyn because I know what the hell is it East Brooklyn? It's East New York, Brooklyn. You feel me? Like, what the hell is it East Brooklyn? Like, that's just... And I also know... I'm not going to lie. Um, I know from being a real estate agent that, you know, when it comes to changing these... Ah, we going to... Because it's pigs in the front. So, when it comes to changing... um. When it come to changing these pigs, when it come to changing, <laughs> I should be yelling it out when they go by. When it come to changing the zoning laws and switching over, uh, uh you know, a na- renaming a region and all of that, like East Brooklyn instead of East New York, like um. What they calling it? Uh, Pro Crow. You feel me? And that's where Prospect Heights and Crown Heights kind of, you know, come together. They calling that Pro Crow. You feel me? With Vanderville projects and all that, that area. By call, yeah, that area by Vanderville. They calling that Pro Crow. You feel me? In the Bronx. In the Bronx right now, they got, um, what they got? Uh, the South Bronx, right? With the gentrification going on in the South Bronx right now, they're renaming it Sobro. <laughs> like Soho, you feel me? That's what they trying to, so you know, Pro Crow and <clears throat> Sobro. So they're trying to switch South Bronx to Sobro. That's part of the whole gentrification you feel me it's like a business right say you got a club your club got shot up not like the club like they was trying to get the club but somebody in the club you know was the target and they had a shootout and it was a shootout in front of your club or whatever like that or inside if that happens then your club has now lost a lot of value a lot less people are going to want to visit your club. A lot less people are going to come spend their monies. A lot less people are going to recommend it. On the contrary, they're going to do the opposite. When somebody speaks of your club, they're going to say, you ain't heard about that shooter that went up? Don't go over there. So what do you do as a club owner? Or, or, or you know, as the business owner? One of the things you do is you hire new people for like the front management or whatever. And then you put up a big sign on the outside under new management. Y'all remember seeing those big signs outside of... I know you've seen that big under new management sign outside of some business, right? So when they put the under new management, it ain't no damn new management. It's basically to get the people to feel more secure, right? Because it's like, look, it's a new club owner, a new... It's going to be new... New, 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 new things going down. Um, so, you know, a new club owner, he's going to run things different. It's nothing to be that fearful about. I just wanted to get this because it's the first time I'm walking past this. Transport lives in East New York. Look at this. Look how beautiful it is. Look at how beautiful they are, yo. Look at how beautiful they are. What does that say? East New York. And they got the Northeast Brooklyn. Look. In business improvement district. Look at how gangster they are. 
Look at how gangster they are. Lighting lives in East New York. Plumbing lives in East New York. Metal lives in East New York. Construction, East New York. Lumber, East New York. Industry, East New York. So they clear that this is East New York, where we at. But look, look at how intentional they are. It says East Brooklyn on the bottom. It say East Brooklyn. I'm all right. No, sis. I wish I could save y'all from this area. I wish I could save y'all. Prostitute, sis. For those of y'all who know where I'm at. Pick and Ave, Williams Ave. For those, this is one of the strips, so to speak. Um, I didn't know. I found this out. I was in the Nation of Islam. I'm coming back to where I was going. I was in the Nation of Islam. A um, couple years ago, and I came over here one time, and you know I had my red, black, and green flag with me. Like this is one of the days. Some days I just bring it with me. You know I just feel like flagging. So I had the flag with me. A sister stops me like, "Oh, that's a nice flag, nice dashiki, and all that." I had the shiki on that day. I remember. And then I'm like, "What's in this area?" Like. Is it shelters over here? Because I'm seeing a lot of shelter-looking people, drug addicts and all that. So I'm like, is it a shelter over here? She like, no, honey. She laughing like, you young, ain't you? What year you was born? Told her 1990s. She like, oh, baby. She like, this is the strip. This is the whole strip. I'm like, what? She like, yeah, this is the whole strip. Two blocks away from the mosque. Like, the joint killed me. The mosque is right here on... on, on, on. Uh, uh, um, Pennsylvania, you feel me? So uh, that struck me that that could be going on that close to the mosque and all of the stuff we preach in the mosque. None of us is out here trying to do nothing about that. You feel me? That that always struck me like, well, damn, the madness is going on right around us. Why are we not? Yeah, we go out in the street and give out flyers and pamphlets to trying to get people to come to the mosque. You feel me? Change their life. I, 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 cool. I'm with you with that. But what about like the real, real work? Like, you feel me? What about the real work? Like, I don't know. But, um, there they go again. East Brooklyn. And y'all can't see it because I'm looking at it now. So I see it's real glary, but it say welcome to East Brooklyn. You feel me? And when it's no, it's East New York. Welcome to East Brooklyn. They good at it, man. All these. The gentrification is real. And it's disgusting. Um, So, where was I going with this? Let me bring this to a close. So, I got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff on my mind, right? But one thing, I, one thing I've always thought since I've made the decision that I want nothing to do with religion. Right, because I was in, you know, I, I was repping Islam at a point, you know, nation of Islam. I was banging. So for me, right, when I made a decision that I'm done with religion, period, that is religion is something that's it's not for me. I don't need it to be a good person. I don't need it to do nothing. It. it I don't need it to learn. It didn't really teach me who my enemy was. Um, well, the Nation of Islam kind of do teach who your enemy is, the white man. But not all the way. Um, they don't go in depth as much as I feel is needed. Um, but anyway, anyway, since I dubbed religion, since I made the decision like religion is over. <clears throat> for me... Um, when I see all these churches and when I see Sundays, how when I see and think back to when I was in the mosque, including myself, the monies that we shell out that we don't have. You feel me? Living in a bum ass, renting a room with no heat and hot water, like holes in the shoes. Like I'm on the way to the mosque. It's raining that day. I'm on the way to the mosque. 
and my 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 socks get wet because I don't have even with the umbrella, I got holes in my shoes. You feel me? So whatever. Not to say that that's their fault, but it's a lot of people going through similar things. At the end of the day, half the church live in a quote unquote hood. If they save that tithe money, if they save the monies, uh, uh, um, patronizing the church and patronizing church events and buying their food when they cook and selling food and all of this, all of this to help and giving all their time and energy, all of this to, to help galvanize, uh, uh, um, you know, some finances and some clout for their church or house of worship, whatever the hell it is. Right. Um, but one thing that I'm just the singing, the dancing, the let me just say this. I've never met nobody and anybody watching this, you know, it's true, too. I've never met anybody. Look, look at the proof. I never met anybody that goes as hard for religion as black people. There's no whether you're talking about a single individual or a whole group of people. Whether you talk about black men, whether you want to single out black women, whether you say us as a whole, whether you say elders, whether you say young people, there's no group of people that worship God and give it all up to God more than black people. There's no group of people that do that more than us. So, and there's no, the amount of black churches compared to white churches, it's not even a comparison. It's just not. So, with all that being said, when it comes to, uh, w when it comes to the churches and black people being the number one group doing everything for God, whether it's it's chastity, whether it's fasting, tithing, in the street, in the training station, giving out the pamphlets all the time, trying to recruit people, changing their life. Uh, 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 praying to God, all of the whole spiel, black people go the hardest for religion. So my question, it hit me. I'm like, hold on. If black people give the most to God, why the hell we getting the least back from that bastard? That's, that's, that's my question. So I'm going to pose it to y'all. And, and, oh, this is nice. A new hair salon. That's what's up. Um, new black business. I appreciate that coming back through here.